All right, I want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, we got head coach Jeff Quinn, senior defense back Naja Johnson. Uh, just a reminder, uh, please state uh, your name and affiliation before you ask a question. With that, coach, uh, I'll let you jump up with the statement. We're good. Thank you, Wolf. Uh, certainly thank you and appreciate for everyone being here. It was another important win beating Eastern Michigan for the first time. Uh, in front of a homecoming and family weekend crowd of over 23,000. I thought it was a uh, uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, showing of uh, you know their attendance. It was a special day for our senior class, uh, their families to be able to get that victory uh, for their senior year. Uh, there was excellent energy and effort in that stadium. And I really, I like what I saw on the field. I like what I saw on the sidelines, even with our young guys, and also uh, you know with our fans. Um, the ejections have been e addressed um, uh, with the MAC office, Danny White, myself, uh, Dwilly Striggles will sit out the first half of uh, next week's, uh, this upcoming week's game against Western Michigan, but we'll play. And uh, no further action will be taking place with Akoya Houston and Tamaris Bell. Uh, what I appreciate more than anything is the way the three of them responded. Uh, uh, very mature, very responsible like. So uh, we move forward. I thought uh, our coaching staff did a tremendous job. You know, our players, uh, you look at uh, Brandon Oliver on the offensive side, you know, he's honored as the uh, the Mac East Offensive Player of the Week, uh, which is a tremendous honor uh, for him and the offensive line, the entire team. Uh, but he was also the University at Buffalo's Department of Athletics Student Athlete Player of the Week. Um, also, Devin Campbell was the National Kickoff Returner of the Week, um, which is a, a tremendous um, accolade for him. And the other guys out there, that was the longest touchdown in the history of our program in that stadium, uh, which was a great uh, – I appreciate the challenge. Uh, so, you know, that, that helped us a little bit there. Um, defensively, the thing that I, uh, what I saw out there was a, a group of guys that had a mindset of stopping the run. You know, when you look at uh, going through three quarters, I think they were only just over 50 yards of uh, rushing offense. And then uh, we were able to, uh, you know, unfortunately, that big long 70 plus drive or run late in the game you know, change the, uh, the the total yardage in against our defense. But these guys have been doing a great job um, stopping the run. The last two weeks have been real solid for us in the front seven. Um, I would say also the takeaways. You know, we'd look at the last two games, we're plus three. Uh, in this particular game, we took the ball away, didn't turn it over. Uh, I thought Courtney Lester's interception was outstanding. Jake Stockman's forced fumble was impressive on film. When I look at that, um, you know, it just shows that our guys are being opportunistic, uh, you know, and trying to take the ball away. And it's made a big difference, you know, in our run so far. I uh, thought our short yardage was outstanding. But when I talked to Lou Tepp, our defensive coordinator, uh, in the last three games, we've been only uh, giving up 16 points a game. And, uh, and certainly, uh, you know, taking the ball away nine times over the last three games. Offensively, uh, you know, I thought just valuing the ball was huge. Uh, the way we're able to win the one-on-one -on -one matchup, you know, you look at uh, uh, the 15 explosive plays in the game, uh, a lot of guys contributed to that. You know, we had nine runs, six passes that were all explosive. We challenged our team offensively, uh, protect the quarterback. We had zero sacks in the game, uh, which was huge by our offensive line. I thought they did a great job along with our running backs. Um, I think uh, just the third down really made a big difference too, especially that first one when Bo rips off a 60-yarder and it's third and four. Uh, really setting the tone for that game. Uh, special teams, I thought Tyler Grassman, our punter, kickoff guy, did a great job. I mean, he put one down on the one-yard line, which was an outstanding kick. Uh, so I just felt like there was a lot of guys contributing in this game, and, uh, and they watched the game yesterday. Uh, we were able to get some good work in the film room, and now, uh, you know, we get ready for Western Michigan. You know, it'll be our first road trip in the MAC. Uh, and we need to prove that we can win on the road, and it's going to be an important game, as, it, as they all are. But, um, you know, I think our kids are really level-headed. Uh, they're very excited about where they're at, and uh, certainly none more excited than this young man sitting to my right, uh, Nyjah Johnson, number 22, our senior corner. Um, I tell you, this guy brings passion and intensity, comes from a great family. Uh, he's also a bright student. He's already earned his undergraduate degree here at the University of Buffalo, and he's in the School of Education. 
Uh, so at the Graduate School of Education, you know, just a tremendous leader, and I've been very impressed with him. And, uh, and he's a big reason why we are where we're at. You know, he's one of 22 seniors, and that class uh, is really a close class. So uh, with that, I'll open up to any questions as we get ready for Western Michigan. Bob DeCesare from the news. Jeff and Nadja, can you both talk about, looking, looking back on it now, what, what did the, the Ohio State and the Baylor games do to prepare you to move forward from there? How, how, how have they been helpful? Well, playing against top competition like that certainly gets you ready for the season. And you know, we, it helped us as a defensive period where we stood and where we can work on to get better at as a defense. And uh, it definitely, you know, Baylor was a tough game, but bouncing back Stony Brook was a big difference in beating UConn and Eastern Michigan this last week definitely helped. You play the best, you find out where you're at. And uh, I think what we saw in the first game was a team that could play four quarters of football see a team that responded coming into that first game being down on the road 23 to nothing and to be able to outscore them in three quarters I think gave us a tremendous sense of uh, confidence that you know we certainly can't start out a game that way but uh, there was a lot of guys that were uh, competing against some of the top competition in the country I think when you look at this past week what Baylor did against uh, West Virginia is amazing they had over 600 yards in the first half and they put 73 points points uh, that's an impressive team and I said they for why they're not one of the top five I don't know why uh, but I was just honored as one of the the voters in the the, the coaches poll for the USA today uh, since there was a change down in Miami uh, they asked me to be uh, uh, the voter and I did it two years in the first two years I was here uh, so I've had some experience doing that. But you know, when you look at the impressive showing of our kids coming out in that game against a team that was uh, very explosive, the way they hung in, the way they played four quarters and tremendous heat, uh, you know, these kids have been preparing well for it. And I think it toughens you up. It shows that this group is gritty. They have the mental toughness. And uh, you know, we got to show that on the road this week. Does that work better, that scenario, because you have you know, a lot of seniors and juniors? You know what I'm saying? You play those games and there's more of a resilience and ability to understand what they're all about as opposed to if you had a younger team that might be questioning itself coming off and play the Baylor game. Well, that's how you develop a program. You know, these guys went down to Tennessee. They've, you know, they've been in Pitt. You know, they've played Georgia. You know, so they, they understood you know what we have to do each and every year to uh, to grow as a program but you know I think it's important that uh, our kids understand I would much rather learn from winning <laughs> than losing regardless so <laughs> I'm all about that uh, you know but at the end of the day you know it was just it was a tremendous experience for these young men to know that they can go into those kind of environments and play against the best and now what they have is something um, where they've got a lot of momentum over the last three games they had to win a close game against Stony Brook you know to battle five overtimes you know, let's face it, you can go one of two ways, and they haven't done that, you know. And, and you look at how that starts to uh, take place week in and week out, and that's what we're building on. Uh, but don't get caught up in the external factors, you know. Try to stay locked into the moment, the process, and not the prize. And, you know, I think these guys understand it. Take care of yourself, get back to work, and, you know, they're excited. They know they have a good football team, and uh, they got to go prove it every week. And I think those first couple weeks really helped us get to where we are today. Where'd you put Baylor? Well, this is going to be my first week. Oh, this week. Yeah, this will be my first week next Sunday. Well, I'm not the only one that thinks they're pretty impressive. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, I haven't really spent a tremendous amount of time. My focus has been on these guys and, you know, game planning and getting ready for uh, Western Michigan. But I'll get a little chance to take a look at where the top 25 are and the other ones getting votes. When you, when you analyze the running game, what's been the biggest difference? over the last couple of weeks? Uh, great question, Rodney. Our running game is is uh, uh, is really starting to come along because we have guys that really uh, understand the importance of a superior effort, and it comes from your attitude. And I think when you get a guy like Bo Oliver back there, um, you know, he's an explosive player, and those guys love having Bo back there. But as I've said to him many times, look, regardless who's carrying the ball, uh, it starts up front. 
and that's why it's starting to click. Uh, but certainly, I think uh, having Bo back there, uh, the ability to, um, you know, have the uh, the balance with the throw game in addition, you know, and staying consistent by calling those plays. You know, Alex Wood does a tremendous job designing Adam Shorter, my offensive line coach, Matt Simon, Marty Spieler. All those guys put a tremendous amount of time, and uh, we kept very consistent with the calls of running the ball. And uh, we gave it to Bo, and Bo did his work, and the offensive line really uh, are starting to really feel good um, about where they're at. But they're going to have to do it week in and week out against as the competition continues to get better. Coach John Gagne in the spectrum. Uh, continuing off what you said about you know the run game statistically, uh, Western Michigan giving up 471 yards a game this week. It's going to be another week where you're going to look to establish the run early and then hope that opens up the pass and, you know, run the game for I think that's been the formula for success. Uh, I think we, we see that that's where our strength is. Uh, and as it continues to grow and develop, that's where we're going to put our main focus in. Uh, but you want balance. You know, and that's the key. You know, you don't want to sit here and say, hey, all we're going to do is run the ball. You know, there's things that we feel good about in our throw game as much as we do about our run game. You know, and that's got to be part of the mindset. Uh, but our kids believe, regardless of what the play is called, it's their, it's their mindset to execute that play and to do their assignment and relative to their responsibility uh, to this football team. And that's been a big part of what this football team has displayed to me is a lot of maturity, a lot of responsibility, a lot of energy, a lot of focus. And, uh, and that's why they're going to be effective in, in the balance of both our run game and our pass game. Imagine, uh, 12 turnovers in five games, including a pick six you had last week. Talk about the defensive mindset in terms of taking them all away. Organized chaos. You know, we want to create as many turnovers as we can. and score as much as we can on defense, shorten the field for our offense because the entire team feeds off of it. Um, it started la you know, with UConn, but last week it played a tremendous factor with uh, Jake Stockman's forced fumble. We scored off of that. And then for Co Courtney Lester to get his interception, that's to take a, I think it was 99 yard, mm -hmm. 90 yard, 99 yard drive down the field. is nothing short of spectacular. You know, we, the whole entire team feeds off of those turnovers and we've got to keep being consistent with doing so. About playing on the road at a place like this. Western Michigan, a little bit different than playing at home. I mean, that's the next step for you guys to show you can win on the road. If we want to be a good football team, we're going to have to be able to win games on the road as well as win our games at home. You know, we have to go on the road this week and take care of business, business and do what we're supposed to do. And that's the bottom line. Uh, Paul Pink from the Bulls Radio Network. Nadja, going back to last year and already a little bit to the start of this year, you know, your defense has been among the better ones in a conference that is mostly an offensive conference. Do you sense that? Do you sense from your opponent? Do you notice that sometimes when you guys can play defense in a conference where teams aren't used to seeing that, that it gives you a big advantage? Yeah, it helps. We, you know, it helps even more when you have a lot of talented guys on the defense and a lot of guys who played a lot of football. You know, guys like Khalil Mack, Lee Skinner, you know, um, Christian Sicoli and great pass rushers, Colby Wade, you know, that make, makes our job a lot easier. But when you have guys that played in this defense and have played a lot of football games, you know, there is a certain confidence that we have out there on the football field. Jeff, they're uncertain on their quarterback the situation. They got back to where he's hurt. Does it matter? They just play a system. Does it matter which one's in there in terms of repping? Well, we've seen both of them. You know, they both have been in. Uh, Tyler's been the starter. But, uh, you know, I think it's important uh, that we focus on ourselves, like you're saying. I think, you know, you got to look at their strengths. You know, is this guy more of a runner? Is he more of a thrower? You know, is he a guy? They like to throw the ball downfield vertically. Uh, they're mixing it up with some 11 personnel, uh, three wides, tight end, back in the backfield, and then also 12 personnel. They played a lot of 12 personnel, uh, you know, in the Toledo game, in all games. So, you know, I think they're going to just do what they do in terms of their structural and their schemes. And then no matter who's playing at that quarterback position, you know, we're going to be – we need to be sound and fundamental and disciplined in our, in our assignments. And that's really the way you stop a team, regardless of who's playing. And that's what our defense has done. And Lou's done a great job. And going back to an earlier comment, uh, you know, the, the defensive – 
part of our program right now um, has always been an emphasis of mine ever since I started coaching. You know, I was an old defensive guy. So when you're sitting here talking to a guy who, yes, I have a lot of influence on the offense, uh, believe me, it's all about defense in terms of, you know, uh, making sure we have the right schemes, the right coaches, the right players, the right development. And that's what I sense with this defense. You saw it last year. We see it again. That's going to create more opportunities for us to be victorious each and every week. So that's where our mindset is right now is really keep that group, uh, you know, riled up and, and playing and swarm and pursuing the football. And that's why we've been being that's why we've had so much success so far this this year. Asha, what do you think the scheme when Luke brought this in last year, you guys it took you guys a while to, to, to adjust to this, you know, probably the first half of last year. And, and then it switched over. Why was it difficult to to adjust to number one and why has it emerged as such an effective defense now? Well, last year, the beginning of the year, we, we weren't all playing on the same page, and that showed in those first six games. But, you know, that pit game, we really played, came together and stuck together as a defense, and we wanted to make sure we put an emphasis this offseason on um, carrying momentum over to this year. And we had a couple of rough spots in our first two games this year, but we feel like we're even more talented defense than we were last year, and we can make even more plays than we've made. It took us to, I think, the end of the last year to get those turnovers, and we wanted to start out hot, especially with conference play. And I feel like we did a good job on Saturday, but when we're going on the road, we're probably going to need two or three, you know, just to make sure we uh, take, that, take that game. What, 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 was, what was the difficulty in, in you know, Adjusting and, and working into it. Well, when you have a new scheme, you know you do have to learn it, and sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get everyone on that same page and playing together. But you know, we we finally we got we, we did we did what we were supposed to do, and I feel confident in our defense. You know, with every other guy that's out there. Have you seen a, a lot of Davis, Roy Davis, with them on, on tape? He's a fr the freshman. Yeah, they got 84. him coming back. Pretty explosive player from what I'm gathering. Yeah, he's, he's a good football player. You know, Western Michigan, they have a lot of good football players. But yeah, he's a pretty talented receiver, and we're not going to underestimate him or anyone else in their offense for that matter. So we're, uh, I have full faith in our coaching staff that we're going to do what we can to limit him and uh, their entire receiving core from any explosive plays. Yeah, he's a talented player, a true freshman. You know, I mean, he's he's got some speed. I tell you, when you brought up the Boise Ross a couple of weeks ago, I think uh, we're starting to find that we have one of those guys too that's going to be able to uh, continue to emerge. But uh, you know, we feel good about uh, our corners, our safeties, uh, to being able to uh, you know uh, to be able to defend their their personnel and their schemes in terms of the throw game and you know these guys have uh, these guys have been outstanding in terms of uh, being able to to get in the right plays get the right coverage checks that's all part of it and I think coach uh, Maurice Lindquist does a great job you know coordinating our pass game defense and uh, and I think guys like Nigel who's been in a lot of games up against against a lot of great players um, you know the speed of Baylor and the quality of play out of Ohio State you know we feel good that we we will match up and our kids are competing with a tremendous attitude and that's how you stop guys um, from from taking over a game like Corey Davis how much confidence are you playing with right now Andre? Uh, a lot you know this is my senior year so I want to make sure I leave it all out there this year but it helps, you know, playing like with Courtney Lester on the other side of the field. And we played, started the last two years together. So it helps knowing that I have a guy over there that I played with and we can make coverage checks and I can just go out and play confidently. And it also helps to have Khalil Mack and Adam Redden rushing the quarterback, force them to make bad decisions. But yeah, I'm playing, I feel like I'm hitting my stride and I'm playing my best football. There were times during the game where it looked like Khalil, there were three different players trying to block him at various points. Um, do you have to keep, you know, I mean, that can be frustrating for a player. Um, any, do you play any role in just trying to keep them, you know, don't get too down, don't get too mad, you know, that that that, that half the team seems like it's trying to stop one guy? I, I think I think Khalil feeds off of that. When guys try to double and triple team, I think he feeds off of it and it makes him even more effective player, you know. So a lot of times I don't really have to say anything to him because he's already hungry and he wants to get the quarterback. And I think he feels a little bit more angrier when uh, he feels guys are trying to triple team him to keep him away from him. Do you uh, 55 points off the turnovers that you've given to your offense. How much of a boost for you guys defensively is it to know that when you do take the ball away, 
more often than not they're turning into points. I mean, what kind of sense do you get from watching that happen? It feels great, you know, to get the turnovers and to stop the run and get teams down early. Like the last two games, you had teams down early and having the force to throw the ball, then it becomes a, a passing game. We feel confident in our passing defense where we can send our defensive line and linebackers rushing up the field and that we can cover guys. So it feels good to get turnovers and have our offense capitalize on them and get the game <coughs> going early. Is there a little bit of competition now in the, in the locker room between the uh, defense and the offense uh, as far as you guys turning the ball over and saying, here you go, fellas, and take it in? Uh, I mean, how does that work? Is, do you feel like that's really kind of bringing the team together? Oh, absolutely. Uh, like I said earlier, um, it's electrifying. You know, if we get a turnover early in the game and the offense punches in, or if we score on defense, you know, it's just great momentum. And then to see Devin Campbell take that kickoff return touchdown to the house was great. And it just it just gives you momentum, and you can feel the energy on the sidelines and even in the locker rooms. You know, so it's, it feels good when the defense is playing well, offense and special teams. Have you felt that excitement so far, or is this just kind of a new stage where you guys are at? So it's got to be great as a senior. Yeah, no, no, it feels good. You know, um, we're, we're definitely excited about what we're doing, and uh, we just need to make sure we stay consistent with it. You know, we, defense needs to consistently get the ball back to our offense, and uh, we have great faith and confidence in our offense that they're going to put points on the board as long as we get the ball back for them. So it's definitely a feeling, good feeling of camaraderie when you know that well, everyone's playing their part. Jeff, what's the, what's the message when you go on the road? I mean, what, what, what changes in terms of your approach to the game? Is it, I guess there's really nothing different outside the fact that the people in the stands are rooting for the team mm -hmm. playing against instead of rooting for you. But, but what's, what's the message you're trying to get in terms of focus and you know, to prepare a team for the road? Well, we certainly hope there's a lot of UB fans in the stadium on Saturday. Uh, two o'clock, we talk a lot about organization and, and structure and scheduling, and I think that's important. Um, you know, and certainly understand it's a business trip. You know, we try to make sure that we have our, um, you know, all of our players locked in, you know, on how to represent the right way, how to be prepared. And you can't get fat, you know, the external factors can't be a part of your thought process, you know, and I tell them all the time. Look, it doesn't matter where you play, who you play, uh, what their record is, what the score is. Those things cannot factor into your thought process because that's how you get distracted and that's how you get beat. And, uh, you know, I think when you have maturity and leadership and you go through the course of four years of the same message, consistent messaging, um, you know, we were able to do that last year on the road. A big come from behind win, I think, made a big difference, you know, in helping our team understand how to get that win on the road. Uh, we haven't been on the road in the MAC yet. Uh, this is a great opportunity for our kids to be excited, passionate, intense, you know, and that's how you do it and not try to get caught up and all that other stuff, uh, you know, that can certainly take you away from your, your mindset. And these kids are ready to do that. And I believe that they will prepare well this week and they'll go on the road. And uh, we certainly are excited about this opportunity. From, from you, Nezha, how big a difference is it playing a road game, say, as a senior as opposed to playing it and one as a sophomore? What what has changed? How has the maturity process brought you along? Um, well, you said it right there. Being more mature helps, you know. Being two years older, I'm not 20 years old, and there's a, I've learned a lot off the field in those two years, so it helps. I have more of a business mindset when we go on the road for these games. And, you know, Courtney and I, we won't get rattled, you know, as quickly as we might have two years ago. And uh, it definitely helps just being more mature. And uh, the older you get, the smarter you get, we feel like. So uh, that's how I answer your question. Anything else, guys? Perfect. I want to thank you for coming, Alex. Uh, Coach Quinn and Najah are both available for one-on-ones.